I've got a companion plant. I grow all around the garden. It's up every border. It's even here in the polytunnel. It's tasty. It's beautiful. It attracts pests and it attracts pollinators. You've probably guessed already what it is, but it's nasturtions. And here's a little bit about them. So nasturtions are an incredible plant. Absolutely love them. Perfect for the kitchen garden. And I'm going to show you something at the end of this video that you can do with them you might not have thought of before. Sowing them's dead easy as well. I sow them between April, May and June uh, in the greenhouse, in little modules to try and get them best start off. But actually they kind of self set everywhere. Once you've got them in your garden, they kind of get established, but they're a dead easy weed to maintain, to, uh, to control. So don't worry about them kind of taking over. They're easy to pull out. They're an annual, so the frost will kill them off. Here we are kind of the middle of October and uh, the frost is gonna have these fairly soon, I'm sure of it. We've had, already had a light frost and I can see it's had some of my yak on and other things in the garden. But the nasturtions have held out for a little bit longer yet. So what makes nasturtions great is it's an awesome companion plant. I've grown it here as kind of like a real beneficial plant in my garden. So it does three things for me really. One, I've got it as a bit of a weed suppressant. I've grown it underneath my apple trees and if I don't grow something here, then a weed grows. And what normally gets established is nettles. And I don't want the nettles here. So I've grown these nasturtiums. They've kind of grown up through my cordon apple trees and made a really nice barrier to kind of stop the sunlight getting to the soil and germinating other seeds. So it works really well like that for me. I've also got them as a trap crop. And what this means is they attract insects that I'm trying to kind of fight off on my other plants. So cabbage whitefly absolutely adore these, but they grow strong enough to kind of survive it. So the cabbage whitefly can be munching on these big nasturtium leaves and leaving my brassicas alone. And that's kind of like my main reason for growing them in such quantity along my garden. So they also attract aphids. There's just a few on that leaf actually, uh, but normally earlier in the year. So it keeps it away from my broad beans and things like that, depending on how late my broad bean crop is. Uh, so it works really well as kind of a trap crop. It also attracts lots of beneficial insects. So bees are kind of drawn to it and other pollinators. So and it just makes the garden a much better place to be and more, stuff more likely to get pollinated. So all parts of this plant are edible. The leaves, the stems, the flowers, they're all edible. They've got a lovely peppery kind of almost mustardy taste. The unripe seeds also have a kind of peppery. Oh, so strong. <laughs> really peppery taste to it. <laughs> the unripe seeds are quite strong. <laughs> but work well as a garnish with something else, not eating on their own. Um, but it's a great edible crop. You can make pesto out the leaves as well. They make a really, really good pesto. You can just take the leaves and have a few of them in a sandwich. It gives it a lovely peppery kick. And the flowers just look absolutely awesome in a salad, um, you know, to garnish the top of it. The kids love coming down to pick nasturtium flowers for, for a salad. It's a really nice task that they can do. And the one thing not to be underrated is just how beautiful they look in the summer when you've got kind of big sheets of nasturtiums growing up something or nice bushes of it kind of growing between other plants. It looks absolutely gorgeous and um, really makes a vegetable garden kind of come alive and just look like it's meant to be. Okay, one thing that's great to do this time of year when all the nasturtiums just starting to set seed and the seeds are still immature, they're kind of green like that, is we can pickle them in a vinegar solution and make some poor man's capers. Okay, to make poor man's capers, it's dead simple. Pick a load of the seeds. Then you want to rinse them and leave them in a salt water brine, just with a bit of a sprinkle of salt overnight. Then boil up some vinegar. Sterilize a jar. You can do this in the microwave, just a minute with a bit of water in the bottom will sterilize a jar quite nicely. Then pour the vinegar over the nasturtium seeds. Put a lid on it, put it in the fridge for a few months to infuse, and there you go. Okay, so nasturtium capers are a little bit stronger than normal capers, so you want to be using less of them, but they are, do give a real peppery kind of vine, vinegary hit in pasta dishes, so really good fun like that. 
Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video, please, in the comments below, tell me what your favourite companion plant to grow is. I'd love to hear it, and I'd love to add it to my garden if possible. Thanks for watching.